this lecture is all about chemical reactions, chemical bonds, and ATP. As we're going through the lecture, make sure you're filling in the note sheet and um, filling in specifically anywhere you see a yellow box with a key term that's bolded in the PowerPoint. All right, so like we said, this lecture is about chemical reactions and chemical bonds. So a chemical reaction is a process that changes or transforms one set of chemicals into another. And a chemical is deemed anything that is made up of multiple atoms. So water, for example, is a chemical. So a reaction is anything that transforms one set of chemicals into another set of chemicals. There's two parts of a chemical reaction, the reactants and the products. So the reactants are the elements, compounds, or molecules that enter into the chemical reaction. So that's your starting material, your starting chemicals. Your uh, products are the elements or compounds or molecules that are produced by the reaction. So that's what you're ending products with, the end result of the chemical reaction. Those two things are always different. The reactants and the products are different because the reactants are transformed into the products. Chemical reactions involve changes in the bonds that join the atoms together into the compound. So what that means is reactants have one set of bonds. They are changed by the chemical reaction and they are formed into different atoms, different elements, and different molecules. So what happens is reactants collide with each other with enough energy so that the existing bonds will be broken and new bonds will be formed. So what does that look like? What does that mean? So for example, a chemical reaction occurs between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce water vapor. So the reactants of this, rea of this chemical reaction are your hydrogen gas and your oxygen gas. In order to produce your product, which is water, the bonds between the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms are broken. So um, hydrogen gas is two hydrogens bonded together. Those bonds are broken. Same thing with oxygen. Oxygen gas is two oxygen atoms bonded together. Those bonds are broken and they are reformed between hydrogen and oxygen in order to produce a new product. One thing that's really important here is that the properties of the reactants are very different from the properties of the products. Because they are forming new molecules, they're forming new chemicals, the properties, so uh, the chemical state, things like that, they are very different. Water is very different from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. All right, so how is energy involved in chemical reactions? Chemical reactions involve changes in energy. So energy is either released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. Um, and we know that organisms cannot just make energy, so they don't get it from nothing. They need a source of energy in order to stay alive and carry out these chemical reactions. So plants and animals obtain their energy a little bit differently. As we know, plants can trap solar energy through the process of photosynthesis, so they can use sunlight energy to make their own chemical energy. Animals, however, are consumers. So remember, they consume energy by eating plants and other animals. We, for example, are an example of a consumer. We consume meat, we consume plants, and that is how we get our energy to carry out our chemical reactions. Energy is then released back to the environment when digested food is metabolized. So when animals break down their food, when plants break down their source of energy, that breaking down of food is um, releasing energy into the environment. All right, so chemical reactions require something called activation energy in order to occur. So activation energy is the energy provided to chemical compounds that results in a chemical reaction. So basically, in order for a chemical reaction to occur, there needs to be this initial source of energy that is put into the chemical reaction. The chemical reaction will not go, it will not happen, if unless there is an activation energy that's added into the chemical reaction. So for example, you see this all the time, but you have no idea that it's actually happening. Um, an example of an activation energy is the cellulose in paper burns in the presence of oxygen and releases heat and light energy. So your paper, so for example, if you take a textbook or if you take a book, um, the, the cellulose or the carbohydrates that make up that paper burn when they are in the presence of oxygen. So we know that oxygen is all around us. We breathe in oxygen. Cellulose or your paper burns in the presence of that oxygen. However, you obviously don't see your books just bursting into flames because they exist in oxygen. That's not what's going on. The chemical reaction between cellulose or your the paper and the oxygen requires activation energy, right? So you need a source of energy in order for this chemical reaction to occur. If you lit the paper with a match, this heat or this heat energy that you're supplying um, is enough energy to get the chemical reaction started. So once you light the cellulose in the paper with the match, then 
the cellulose will burn, right? It will burn because it's in the presence of oxygen. However, the paper just doesn't spontaneously catch on fire. You need that initial source of energy. You need that activation energy that is provided in the match in order to get your chemical reaction to occur. So the main thing I want you to take away here is that chemical reactions occur after you input the activation energy. You need an initial source of energy for chemical reactions to occur and get started. So enzymes play a role in that activation energy. So we learned about enzymes when we talked about lactase in the lactose intolerance investigation, and we'll get back to that in a moment. So certain chemical reactions are essential for life, have activation energies that are way too high, and that means that makes them not practical. So for example, in the lactose intolerance investigation, the, so the activation energy for lactose is very high. And it's not practical to break down lactose without an enzyme. So a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of chemical reaction by lowering its activation energy. So you can have natural catalysts or you can have uh, catalysts that you add, for example, in the lab. And in, for the sake of biology on this class, we're only going to focus on natural catalysts that you can find in nature. So enzymes are a natural catalyst or nature's catalyst because they speed up chemical reactions that take place in the cells. And they do that by lowering the activation energies of bio biological reactions. So what enzymes do is they lower the amount of energy needed to carry out a, a chemical reaction. Remember, all chemical reactions need an initial source of energy. They have an activation energy that they need in order to start. However, enzymes can make that activation energy lower so that it's easier to complete the chemical reaction. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that all enzymes have the suffix ace. So for example, we talked about lactase. They have that ASE suffix, and that's how you're able to identify them. So if we're ever talking about something and you see a word with the ending ace, it's probably an enzyme. Uh, enzymes have a really dramatic effect on how quickly the reaction is completed. So because they lower that activation energy, they're speeding up the chemical reaction and they're making it occur way faster. And usually enzymes are very, very specific and can only catalyze one, one specific chemical reaction. So for example, lactase is very specific. It can only catalyze or it can only speed up the chemical reaction between lactose and water. All right, so I've been bringing up this example with lactose and lactase. The chemical reaction that breaks down lactose requires a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to break down lactose into glucose and galactose. Um, it will not happen. It will not occur. It will go too slowly without the help of an enzyme. The enzyme lactase, which we studied, see that ASE, lactase, is the enzyme that speeds up this chemical reaction. So with the help of lactase, the reaction between lactose and water takes place, which means lactose is broken down into glucose and galactose way more quickly because it has the help of the enzyme to speed up the chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy. So you can see that here. Um, the blue line represents the chemical reaction between lactose and lactase with that or the chemical reaction of breaking down lactose with lactase so see notice the amount of activation energy is way lower the amount of energy we need to complete this chemical reaction is lower the red line represents the chemical reaction without an enzyme so this is without lactase notice how much energy it takes to uh, break down lactose into glucose and galactose this, this chemical reaction would never occur because we would never get that much energy naturally we need something to lower the amount of energy in order for the chemical reaction to take place. And in this case, it's lactase. So lactase takes down the amount of energy so that we can complete this chemical reaction. So here is a graphic that shows how lactase works. So you have lactose, the enzyme comes in and breaks apart uh, lactose into glucose and galactose, and your final products are glucose and galactose. All right, so how do enzymes do this? How do they lower their activation energy? Uh, I want you to remember that when you have a chemical reaction, What's going on here is that the reactants are colliding, the old bonds between the reactants are breaking, and the new bonds are forming in order to form the products. If the reactants don't collide with enough energy, they will remain unchanged and the products will never form. So if there's not enough energy or the activation energy is too high, we will never get the products. Enzymes provide a location, they provide a very hidden location, where reactants can be brought to react together. And this secret location, this site, reduces the amount of energy needed for the chemical reaction to occur. 
So basically enzymes provide a very specific place where chemical reactions can occur and this location reduces the amount of energy it needs the chemical reaction needs in order to take place so we have when we're talking about enzymes we have something called substrates which are the reactants of an enzyme catalyzed reaction so when you hear substrate think of your reactants and the active site is the location where the enzyme where the location on the enzyme where the substrate binds so the active site like i said that's the location on the enzyme where the substrate binds um, and the active site and the substrate have complementary shapes, which means the substrate or the reactants can very easily bind to the enzyme and they create this uh, very like perfect shape where the substrate fits in the enzyme called the enzyme substrate complex. It kind of fits like a lock and key. It fits perfectly. The shapes are complementary, so it fits perfectly. Uh, once the substrate binds, uh, the substrates are converted into the products and then the products are released and that is how the enzyme catalyzes or allows the chemical reaction to occur so now let's look at this through the lens of lactase and lactose lactose and h2o so lactose is the sugar are the substrates so they are the reactants in the chemical reaction so this substrate represents your lactose and h2o lactase is the enzyme so this is your enzyme and this enzyme is providing a location where lactose and h2o can complete their chemical reaction with less energy so lactose and la uh, lactose and h2o bind to lactase and they form this enzyme substrate complex they complete their chemical reaction the bonds are broken and reformed to produce glucose and galactose and those are the products of your chemical reaction one last thing I wanted to talk about is ATP. This is completely different from enzymes, but I wanted to bring it in, slip it in here before we move on to talking about cells. So ATP is a very important energy source and organisms use molecules as food. ATP is an example of a molecule that cells use to store and release energy. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and this is a molecule used by cells to store and release energy. I will be referring to it as ATP. Um, ATP consists of an adenosine molecule. So adenosine is your nitrogenous base bonded to your sugar. So this is your adenosine. And then it's also covalently bonded to three phosphate molecules. All right. So this is adenosine triphosphate. This is ATP. This is your adenosine and your three phosphate molecules bonded together. So the three phosphate molecules are what we're going to focus on here. That's what I really want you to take away from this. These phosphate molecules store a lot of energy. So the bonds that bond the phosphate groups together, this bond right here, stores a ton of energy, a lot of energy. Organisms can release energy and use that energy by breaking the chemical bonds between these phosphate groups. So if we break this bond right here, our, our cells break this bond, our cells can then use that energy to complete a chemical reaction. So when we break this bond, so say we need energy to complete a chemical reaction. When we break a bond between the two phosphate groups, we get ADP. So ADP is adenosine tri a diphosphate, and that's formed when the um, bond between the second and third triphos or the second and third phosphate group is broken. The result of that is that energy is released, so we can use the energy, and then ADP only has two phosphates left. In order to um, regain that energy, you have to bond another phosphate to then reform adenosine triphosphate. Major takeaway here is that ATP is a major energy source and it involves three phosphate groups. These bonds between the phosphate groups have a ton of energy stored and we can break those bonds in order to release that energy.